Up next on the Monday Morning Racer, NHRA results, NHRA track news, and a word on points from a current NHRA funny car driver. <laughs> Hello Drag Race fan, I'm Lee Kraft, the Monday Morning Racer. And in this installment, we're going to be looking at NHRA results from the latest national meet, track news, and also a funny car driver calling for a tweak in the points system. So, if you would, hit the like button, subscribe to this channel as I try to keep you up to date on news from the NHRA and other form of motorsports, whether I'm live on location or giving analysis to what's happening in the world of motorsports. So, the last NHRA national meet was in Topeka, Kansas at the Heartland Motorsports Park for the Heartland Nationals. So in top fuel, Steve Torrance wins his fifth in a row for the Capco Boys. Robert Height wins for the John Force Racing Camp in Funny Car. Pro Stock was not on track for this particular national meet. Pro Mod was though. Stevie Fast Jackson, he wins Pro Mod in an emotional race for him and his team, but a race that in the first round of Pro Mod saw serious carnage. There were four cars in total wrecked in the first round of Pro Mod at the Heartland Nationals. Two cars collided, one car hitting the wall, one car even hitting the wall and rolling violently. It could have almost been five cars in total collected in the round one carnage. Overall, the Heartland Nationals was a great event with Top Fuel Funny Car Pro Mod as well having factory stock and top fuel Harley on the premises. So definitely make sure, catch the rewinds, catch the event. It was some stellar drag racing. Now on to some track news concerning NHRA venues. I'm sure last week you heard the bombshell news drop that Maple Grove Raceway is now up for sale. And we are going to touch on that, but before looking at Maple Grove, I want to bring you up to speed on some NHRA venue news that you might not have heard about. First, we're going to take a look at the venue that we just left the most recent NHRA National Meet from. That is Heartland Motorsports Park. What is the issue there? Well, they're in a tax battle. You know, you and I as Americans, we have a funny history with taxes. We rebelled from the English crown because of taxation without representation. You have the Whiskey Rebellion right after the American Revolution over taxes on whiskey nonetheless. And we currently live in a day and time where both parties like to use taxes as a political football, kicking them around and you and I as drag race fans, we have to deal with the issue of taxes, in this case, at Heartland Motorsports Park. What is the problem? Well, there doesn't seem to be a problem with the town, Topeka, or the county itself, except with the appraiser's office. The track is currently being taxed $1,000 a day. Do the math. $30,000 a month, roughly some $365,000 a year for a facility that in essence is only open seven to eight months out of the year. Holds one NHRA national meet, but remember it's not just the NHRA that races there. They have a road course, they have other racing that happens there at that venue, swap meets, car shows, things of that nature. It is a important place for car culture in its region. Now, one of the reasons this is a problem, I don't mind a county getting tax revenue, a county needs tax revenue for its people that reside within the county. I get that. But this track at one time was tax exempt other than the sales tax apparently that would be incurred from concessions and other type of products sold at the track. Chris Payne, the now owner, bought the track in 2016 and since then has paid a hefty amount of taxes for owning the track. 
Matter of fact, the $1,000 a day that I mentioned, that's even after a readjustment by the appraiser's office there in Shawnee County. So, I'm calling for, I'm recommending for you that are fans that attend the facility in Topeka, for you that are racers that attend this facility in Topeka, reach out to your local representative and see how you, as the public, as people who see this as a vital place for racing and car culture, can assist in what you can get done to alleviate this particular issue. Because Chris Payne, at one time, was thinking about moving the venue completely to another more welcoming area for racing and motorsports and for him to do business, but he has decided to stay and to stick it out, and I'm glad for that, but it must be challenging paying nearly $1,000 a day in taxes. Overall, I appreciate Chris Payne's resolve in the current situation of being taxed nearly $1,000 a day. He is pursuing legal action against the Shawnee County Appraiser's Office to get this further adjusted for a better rate for the Motorsports Park facility. And he is resolved definitely to stay in Topeka. The Topeka Capital Journal, cjonline.com, they report this in an article entitled, Heartland Motorsports Park's Chris Payne, We're Not Going to Get Pushed Out of Topeka by Rick Patterson. Within the article, this is stated, It's staying in Topeka. We want to stay in Topeka and we're not going to get pushed out of Topeka. We're fighting. We're here. We're not going anywhere. It's our town. It's our track. And this is where it needs to stay. And I'm not going to let outside elements change that. So again, possibly, if you can help Get in the fight along with Chris Payne. Reach out to a representative. Reach out to anyone you may know that's a government official in Topeka or the Shawnee County Appraiser's Office and see how Heartland Motorsports Park can be helped out. I did not hear of this news until recently, and I don't believe they mentioned this when NHRA was there for the Heartland Nationals. This news really hasn't got out any farther, I think, than Topeka itself. So letting the racing world know, letting the drag racing world know that Heartland Motorsports Park is in a tax battle. Let's see what we can do for them and keep racing in Topeka. It seems like there's been a lot of bad news concerning racetracks lately. I know for the past two weeks it seems like I have seen every day the report of some dirt track across America closing well, how about some good news concerning a racetrack? And we get some good news from Pacific Raceway in Kent, Washington, which holds a NHRA national meet. And what is the good news there? Well, they are improving the facilities. How much so? Well, we're looking nearly, when you combine all the totals that are going to be invested, a $27 million project. So Pacific Raceway, which will soon be known as Pacific Motorsports Park, is home to more than just NHRA drag race, and they also have a road course. And the road course is even currently underway of being repaved. We're looking at a $2 million investment into the facility that includes this repaving. It also includes a brand new drag strip and a word from the track president, as reported by dragzine.com, goes as this. We are thrilled to move into the first phase of development on what is our biggest endeavor yet, says Pacific Raceway's president, Jason Fierreto. We will begin our first 200,000 square foot phase of garage construction later this year. We want to thank all that have been involved and our loyal Pacific Raceway attendees for the their years of unwavering support. So that would really be towards the two million dollars for the race facilities. What about the other 25 million dollars? Well that part and that investment is a part of Washington State itself and a project that they have deemed as a project of statewide significance. That with the racing facilities and the area around it, it would become a automotive 
hub for the region. So what are they eyeing? What are the desires for the racing facility for what will be Pacific Motorsports Park to be as a automotive hub? It looks like this. They plan on adding cutting-edge auto tech companies, motorsports teams, industry startups for the automotive industry, and industry research on future automotive operations. So they intend to make this far more than a racetrack, far more than a drag strip or a road course. They intend to make this a place in the Pacific Northwest. They intend to make this facility a place that's more than just a racing venue. They intend to make it a hub for the entire automotive industry and in particular for the region of the Pacific Northwest. So we're talking about a project that is going to be involved in education. It's going to be involved in employing many more people. It's going to be involved in possibly some cutting-edge technology for the automotive world. Not just NHRA drag racing, not just Sports Car Club of America, not just racing, but possibly in the future affect each and every one of us with what they're planning to do here. It's great to hear a track expanding, and not only expanding for racing, but expanding to be a benefit to the totality of the automotive world. I think that's great for you and I as racing fans, as car enthusiasts, that you have Pacific Raceway, which will be Pacific Motorsports Park in the future, making such an investment in racing and the automotive world. So, some good news there in Kent, Washington. Some of the worst news that I have heard concerning NHRA drag racing recently is, as of last week, Maple Grove Raceway, Reading, Pennsylvania, is up for sale. Now, this is some alarming news for the area's drag race fans. And what I mean by the area, for example, I am in western New York, upstate New York, just outside of the city of Rochester. And for me to catch a NHRA national event where you have Nitro, Pro Stock, and the big names of the sport gathered together to race, I'm eyeing Norwalk, Ohio, which I plan on being there this year, or I'm eyeing Reading, Pennsylvania, and Maple Grove Raceway. They're both about five, five and a half hours away. In fact, the closest drag strip to me is Toronto Motorsports Park in Cayuga, Ontario, and they have a Nitro National event for themselves, the Canadian Nationals. But when it comes to NHRA national meets, it's Norwalk or Reading, Pennsylvania. So you can see how possibly losing in the future Maple Grove Raceway is a serious issue for the market that is upstate New York, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, places around Reading, Pennsylvania. We've already lost English Town and drag racing there. The prospect of losing Maple Grove is, again, alarming. So with this type of announcement, the question is always this, why? Why are you selling now after a long history of drag racing? So in an article by competitionplus.com, they put out a statement from the management of Maple Grove Raceway itself. And it goes as follows. Running a world-famous facility and maintain approximately 450 acres is not an easy venture. The families are seeking new owners for Maple Grove Raceway now because they want to see the track continue and advance to the next level. So apparently what you have with Maple Grove Raceway is people now involved within the families that just no longer desire to operate and run the track. Look, I cannot imagine the complexities of running a world-class facility and the stress that would be involved of managing 450 plus acres with everything that's involved with the facility and the off-site locations that they own. The fact is, it would be a daunting task, and I could see how it would wear 
on family members. Not to mention, it's possibly a situation of just like with American farms. You have someone grow up, they're just not interested in being involved in what the family's been in. They want to move on to something else. And if that's the case, well, you need to sell the track. I'm sure that you hope, just as I do, that Maple Grove Raceway is purchased by someone or some group, possibly even the NHRA, though I don't think that's the best option, and it continues to have racing for the future, and it's even improved upon to make an even better venue for NHRA National Meets. So, overall, we've got a tax battle in Heartland Motorsports Park, Topeka, See if, what you can do. Reach out to your representative if you're in the local area and help Chris paint out. We've got a huge investment of nearly $27 million by Pacific Raceway itself with $2 million to the racing facilities and a considered important project by the state of Washington to make in an automotive hub there at that facility as well as Maple Grove Raceway up for sale because the family is looking to move on and hand it to people who will take it into the future. That's the NHRA track news I've got for you. It's not that great. We do got the bright spot with Pacific Raceway and the huge investment that's being made there. That is great news. But hopefully we see taxes resolved in Topeka, Kansas and a good buyer for Maple Grove Raceway. I want to take the time and end this video with looking at a recommendation from Ron Caps on an adjustment to the NHRA point system. So Ron Caps, the driver of the Napa Funny Car for Don Schumacher Racing, he has a great insider's blog with Auto Week that follows him and he makes installments regularly giving a glimpse inside the world of NHRA drag racing and in particular funny car racing. In the entry that I've got linked in my description below, he mentions that he would like to see an adjustment made to the NHRA point system and this is the reason why. When you rack up wins, and he racked up two in a row recently, when you get to the resetting after the regular season, those wins really didn't count for you. Yes, a ton of wins from Pomona to the U.S. Nationals might have propelled you to winning the regular season championship, but the fact of the matter is, the points are reset, and whoever won the regular season championship, it's only like 20 points above the second place individual within the points with only 10 point increments going back through the top 10 drivers. So that makes the wins in which you had during the regular season not really mean that much at all. So, Ron Caps has been apparently championing for a while behind the scenes in drivers' meetings with the NHRA, that type of setting. Hey, we need more points for those who actually win NHRA national meets. Something similar to what NASCAR is doing with their playoff points, and you're able to take points with you after winning stages and races into the championship rounds. Ron's saying, let's have something like that, so that if you win, you get more from winning. Also, beyond that, something I would like to see, if in the regular season, yes, you win, let's give them some extra points. That makes sense. Make that win mean something. But also, national records. If you set a record, you set a record. Those points should carry on to you. I'm also fine with number one qualifier points carrying on. That would shake up the point system in such a way that those that actually did perform best during the regular season will have a better shot at winning the championship, though you have those that did not do so well get a reset, get closer, get nearer to those that had run away during the regular season, giving them a shot later in the year. So with Ron making this point, I definitely think there needs to be an adjustment. Now, in the comments below, Please feel free to comment on anything that I've shared with you. Would love to hear your thoughts on the Heartland Nationals that we just had wrapped up in Topeka, Kansas. The track news, 
that I have been able to present to you and what you think the NHRA point system should look like. Maybe you're one of those that thinks it should go back to how it originally was. Maybe you also agree with Ron that it should be tweaked to allow the winners to have their wins impact farther into the championship countdown. Well, I'm Lee Kraft. This has been the Monday Morning Racer. Please like this video, subscribe to this channel, and until next time, God bless and keep the pedal to the metal.